Right, and the gospel is from the Gospel of St. Matthew, the 11th chapter, beginning with the 25th verse. And our Lord Jesus says to Paul, At this time Jesus declared, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and the understanding and revealed them to the little children. Yes, Father, for such was the gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father. And no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. The gospel of the you may be seated. Let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have gathered us together this morning to be in the presence of your Son. For you have promised that the two or three gathered in the name of Jesus there he is in the midst of us. So we Lord Jesus. We praise and honor and glorify the great shepherd of the sheep. We come to you as needy, needy sheep. We need to be fed, healed, cleansed, made new and correct. By your Holy Spirit, now Lord, uh, put your word deeply in our hearts and bear fruit for eternal life. And Lord, we pray, Holy Spirit, that the word of my mouth and the attention of our hearts will be truly acceptable in your sight. Our strength and our name. Amen. Praise and peace to God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. During some of my confirmation classes, one of the things that I have found is that they, they have some really good questions. And, and the kids have been asking about evangelism. How do we evangelize to people who are practicing witchcraft? How do we evangelize to people that are practicing Satan? Believe it or not, there are a lot of those people around, and our kids are actually running into them. And so we've had some good discussions about what to do. But the one thing that has really struck me, especially in this gospel, is that if we want to know how to evangelize to people, then we need to return to the Word. Because the Bible will show us how to do the work of the kingdom. And you and I are part of the body of Christ called to go out into the world and share the good news of Jesus with everybody. It says in Scripture that He desires all people to come to the saving knowledge. All, which means all, everyone. There are no exceptions. And today, it would be good for us to consider one people group or one religious group that desperately needs to be evangelized, which is growing in our country, growing in political power, and having a great deal of power even in our educational system. And that group that I want us to consider evangelizing is the Muslim community. How does this lesson speak to us about how to evangelize these people. And, you know, if you don't have to look very far, you'll find people who are Muslim. You go down to Leaders, Walmart, or any of these other stores, you'll find people from Somalia and elsewhere who are Muslim, and they're there. And these people have a religion that puts them in bondage. And Jesus desires to set the prisoner free. So, with that in mind, let's consider today the nuts and bolts of how we might evangelize people who are Muslim. The first thing we find in today's gospel lesson is that Jesus offers to answer two of their important questions. There are two questions they raise all the time when they're talking to Christians. And you know what they are? The first question that a Muslim will ask is this. 
Did Jesus really say that he is the Son of God? Because we need to remember that in their book, in the Quran, Jesus is called a prophet, but not the Son of God. And in fact, they don't believe that he is the Son of God. And so they want to know, did he really say that he's the Son of God? And by the way, they refuse to listen to the Gospel of John. You know why they refuse to listen to the Gospel of John? I have no idea. But my opinion is, the reason they don't want to listen to the Gospel of John is because the Gospel of John answers all of their questions in the very first chapter. So, with only the first three Gospels, and they will only accept an answer that's on the lips of Jesus himself. How does Matthew answer that question? Is Jesus the Son of God? Did he say that he's the Son of God? Well, we find in today's lesson, yes, he did. He said, All things have been handed to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone who he chooses to reveal him. Who is the Son here? Jesus. He is claiming to be the Son of the living God. So the first question is answered right there. Is Jesus the Son of God? Yes, He is. Did He say so? Yes, He did. And that leads to the second thing. They will often ask the question, where does it say in your Bible that Jesus ever said, worship me? And the answer to that question is this. While it's true that Jesus never ever said those specific words, we find throughout the first three Gospels that Jesus always received worship, always accepted worship, and never told people to stop worshiping Him. We find, by the way, after His resurrection in the Gospel of Matthew, in chapter 28, that when his disciples saw him raised from the dead, what happened? They fell down and worshipped him. And Jesus did not say, stop it. Instead, he said, all authority in heaven and earth been given to me. I'm the one that you worship. We find in Luke chapter 17 that after he healed the ten people with leprosy, one of them came back, fell down on his feet, and worship them. And you know what Jesus said? He said this was giving thanks to God. And then finally, we see that when the wise men show up to meet Jesus when he was a toddler probably, or at least two, you know what they did? They fell down and they worshiped him. Jesus may never have said, worship me. But he certainly received worship, affirmed that worship, and called it the worship of the Almighty God. So did Jesus receive worship in what people to worship him? Yes. So the answer to both those questions is, yes, he did call himself the Son of God. And yes, he did say, in his own way, I'm the one to be worshipped. He did. So then, that leads us to the second thing. And that is, how can we know that God actually loves us? How can we know that? Why is that important for a Muslim? Because the Muslim religion is one of complete works righteousness. In other words, they work morally on pilgrimages. They do all kinds of things in order to maybe, possibly, sort of, Guarantee that they can go to heaven. Because according to their, their book, their God doesn't forgive anybody. They don't know if they're forgiven when they die. Even Muhammad didn't know if he was going to go to heaven. You know why? Because the God they serve in the Quran is called, you ready for this? He's called the great deceiver. Now, who in the Bible is called the father of lies. Is it God? No. It's the devil. Jesus says right off, he's a murderer and a liar, and when he speaks lies, he's speaking according to his nature. 
But Jesus has come that we may have life and have it to the full. So they are worshiping a false god and really worshiping the devil and they don't know it. And they are told that they have to work themselves to the possibility of maybe getting to heaven. Because God, in essence, doesn't like them. He hates them. He detests them. But he might kind of sort of help them when they die. How can we show them what the real heart of God is? Well, it comes back to that answer. Well, they ask, did Jesus really say he's the Son of God? And we say, yes, he does. What did Jesus show us as the Son of God? He shows us the heart of the Father. When we look at Jesus, who do we see? We see the Father. And what is the Father like? Does the Father hate us? No. Father so loved the world that he sent his only Son. That whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. And the God of the Bible is a God of covenant. In other words, if he makes a promise to you, you can absolutely expect that is the way it's going to be. That's why when Muslims do come to faith, there are two things they find out that they never saw in the Quran. You know what that is? That they can be forgiven right now and that they can be loved by God right now. I remember one Muslim I got to witness to when I was in college. And when he finally came to faith, I saw him a year later, he was walking on clouds. Because he had met the Savior. And he knew that he knew that his God loves him. He had met Jesus. And by the way, he helped lead his entire, uh, his entire, uh, uh, God said it, God, uh, mosque. He witnessed to his entire lives, and they all got saved, including the Imam. They all went and got baptized. Went to the Baptist church. Praise the Lord, they went and got saved. Why? Because they found out who God really is. He doesn't hate you, He hates your sin, He hates the evil that goes on. But He wants to rescue us out of it and bring us into right relationship with Him. And He promises that if we will believe in His Son, surrender to Him, we will have eternal life. You can guarantee it. You don't have to guess. And you don't have to work your way into heaven because Christ has done that for you. But then that leads to the third thing. The third thing is how do they enter in yes, to the goodness of God, to meet Him. Jesus tells them. It's the same word He gives to all of us. He says, come to me. You labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you this. We need to give the message that the only way to get set free from the bondages of false religion, false gods, false hope, addiction, whatever it is, is to come to Jesus. Come to Him, surrender to Him, take His yoke upon us, which means actually believe what He's saying, live by His word, and He will give us rest. That's the message. In a nutshell, it's the same message that Jesus gives to everyone. Because apart from Him, all of us are one. All of us are a false God unless we're in heaven. And so today, when we consider that you and I are all called the evangelists, let's be that people that reach out to the Muslim community and share with the good news that Jesus really is the Son of God. And because He's really the Son of God, He really shows us who God really is. He doesn't hate you. He can be counted on. He really does forgive. And not only does He forgive, He wants to forgive. See, that was, that's the thing that a lot of people don't get. Even, even, even some Christians don't get this. Is that God really wants to forgive you. He's not sitting there going, because I ran into a guy who said, said this once. You know, he isn't some God that's sitting on a chair having a sandwich and going, what, you mean that? I'm trying to enjoy my lunch. All right, one more time, don't bother me again. 
That's not who God is. He shows up looking for you. He wants to bother you so that he'll bother you enough to get out of your sin and turn to him and get saved. That's how much he loves you. We have a God who forgives, cleanses, and is accountable. Let's share that with the Muslim community. Because once they get that revelation, you want to know something? And I see it. There, are, there is no more zealous people for Jesus than a former Muslim who has met the Lord. They are just as zealous for Jesus as they were for Allah, except this time they don't kill the body. But they're willing to lay down their lives because they met the Lord. And you need to have this. So let's share that with everyone, but especially the Muslims that we meet. Because they are in bondage, they're feeling hopeless, they have despair, and Jesus says that if you're heavy laden, the only way out, come here. And he will give the rest. They're all past people who need rest. Let's not forget to share this with the Muslims that we meet. So let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for this time together. We ask that you would quicken this word in our heart. We pray that you would grant us divine appointments so that we can share your word and your love and your salvation, Father, with others. That all may come to know Jesus Christ and Lord to the glory of God the Father. His redeeming, beautiful love. And be filled with the Holy Spirit and our fire and glory to your name. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.